Okay, let's use the steam arm on our machine. Obviously on the front of the machine, there are two settings. You can see this side is where we would turn the dial if we wanted to get hot water out of the steam arm. The other side is for steam. And the first thing we're going to do, turn it to steam and let it push out all the water it was using before to make coffee. So this is purging the, this is the extra water you can see going in there. We didn't want that going into our milk because it would just water it down and it wouldn't be hot enough. So now it's starting to flash steam on the left hand side and it's starting to sound pretty good. We can hear the pump starting up, it's ready to steam. So we can take our purged water out of the way, get our milk that we've already got in our jug, pop that into here and start it up again. It's already in steam mode. Uh, this is really a personal concept when you're doing the milk in a jug. Some people like lots of foam, some people like a little bit of foam. You tend to find after a little bit of practice with the machine you've got, what it responds best to. Putting the steam wand further into the milk will obviously give you less of the foam. We've built up some foam already. And now it's starting to move around. You can grab yourself a thermometer if you like, if you want to be really particular about the temperature you get your milk to, or you can go by touch. And the best way to go by touch on the outside of these jugs is to make sure that the whole outside of the jug gets to a point where you can touch it with your hand, but you can't hold on to it. So that you get to a point where you can't rest your hand on the outside of the jug anymore. If you just test the bottom of the jug, that'll tend to get hotter a little bit quicker because the steam's heading downwards. But once the whole jug on the outside has reached a point where it's too hot to hold, then you know that the milk is going to be nice and hot. And that feels pretty good at the moment. So without timing it, I would say it might have taken us a minute, minute and a half maybe, from very cold milk to piping hot and ready to make a really nice coffee with a good flavor. So giving it a tap, helping to get rid of some of our bubbles, and giving your steam arm a wipe off. Now the next part of the process, obviously you're going to want to make yourself a coffee to put the milk into. So we'll put some milk in the glass, and then we can add our coffee to it. And it's just a case of choosing how strong you'd like your cup of coffee to be. We'll use the one we had before, and maybe we can fit a double shot in there. So what you might have noticed me do then was press the button twice. You'll also notice there's a little bit of steam comes out the right hand side of the machine because what they do is automatically purge themselves for you. So now the steam is gone and it's gone back into coffee mode. It's cooled itself down and it's going to make two small shots of strong coffee because I changed the strength on the front to be the three beans. And one of the benefits of putting the milk into the cup first is you get that nice layering effect as the coffee falls through the milk. It's done one shot. It's dumping that into the dump bin. And now it's grinding up the second shot. So this is obviously a way you could have done two black coffees at the same time because one could have gone under either outlet on the machine. So that's all that's involved in doing the steaming using the steam arm and then adding your coffee to it. And it's just practicing. If you'd like more froth than that, that's more of a latte. For a cappuccino, you would have built up more froth on the cup of coffee. Now we've got a nice layering effect and a nice looking latte. That's how easy it is to do on the Gaja Brera.